Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disabilities Redefined with Dr. Wagner. I am here with Robert Andy Coombs. He is an, uh, well, he is an artist, not up and coming. He is already a pretty established artist as it is. Usually I start these, these interviews off and we're going to jump right in. We're going to jump right in. Now you had a very, very good article. Uh, I think, it, let me get the information. It was in March 29th. No, that was your Palm, you were in Palm Springs, uh, Palm Springs Art Museum through March 29th. That's where this, this uh, originated from. However, the Vulture, Vulture Magazine. I'm gonna read the last paragraph of this, this very good article. The sex depicted in Coombs' work has almost never been depicted in the history of art. As he puts it, there are people with disabilities who have no idea how, the, how their body even works sexually because healthcare professionals don't cover sexuality as part of their practice. People with disabilities are left to figure out everything on their own. Society doesn't view us as sexual human beings. My work is just scratching the surface of whatever disabled sex looks like. We need to start shifting the conversation from how do we have sex to what sexual acts do you enjoy? Hey, that's a, that's a pretty powerful statement, right? Yes. <laughs> what do you want your work to say? What do I want my work to say? Um, I don't know that I'm that I'm here. I'm queer. I'm disabled. Get used to it. I, <laughs> you know, like I I enjoy sex. I enjoy intimacy. Um, yeah, and and it's it's not something to be uh, scared of. Uh, having sex with someone with a disability uh, is, you know, pretty much the same as having sex with someone else, right. an able-bodied person. So. Just so like, you, yeah, like, just, and just enjoy it. It's good. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> when do you think you or any artist for that matter, disabled or otherwise, would go too far? Oh, man. I don't know if I've been there yet. I don't know. Like, and that's why I started the work with myself was because I know I could push myself to you know really go there with my artwork and and just be unapologetic and and um yeah i mean i i don't think i i haven't done anything that that a an able body able body artist hasn't you know gone there before but um yeah i don't know we'll see yeah. <laughs> if, I, if i end up going too far <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how you brought that to yourself because it's almost like your artwork is a part of you. And yeah, was, uh, yeah so uh, you're right. Maybe you haven't gone that far yet, you know? Hey, that's, that's, a great, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. As an artist, however, and I always want to ask this about artists, and again, it might not really be relevant in today's society. Again, as I, before we start, we had a conversation, you know, before we started, and we, you know, I'm of a different generation. Uh, you're 33, is it? 33? I'll be 33 in October, yes. Okay, all right. 30. Yeah. So, yeah, I did my homework. I know what's going yeah. on over there. <laughs> so, you will be 33. I'm a few years older. Let's be nice, okay? <laughs> we didn't have social media. We didn't have all of that whenever I was in my 20s and even in my early 30s, to be honest with you. When we went to an art gallery, there was something special because not everybody was uh, exposed to this work. Right. As an artist, do you think that is a plus or a minus that we can, that as a, you know, a society, and particularly as an artist, that you can just share your work with so many people? Or is there ever a time that you say, you know, I just want to hold on to this and only share it with a select few? Yeah, no, I, I think, it's it's extremely important for uh, for emerging artists to get their work out so everyone can see it and and just the way that like 
you know, like Jerry Saltz with me, you know, just they find, you know, an image and then, you know, look into you and, and they're like, holy shit, you know, I haven't seen this before. And, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it, you, you know, you can pretty much go viral and, and get a lot of popularity um, where it seems like you, you know, just came out of nowhere you know, just an overnight sensation where, you know, like the last 10 years I've been working, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, get recognized. So I think social media is an amazing, amazing yeah. platform to get your artwork uh, in order to um, just create a buzz around yourself. Um, but ultimately, I think the, the images need to be seen in person because they're quite large. Mm -hmm. uh, they're usually like 40 by 53 inches. So seeing those images up close and personal, seeing the detail, um, the, the color, and I, I print on metallic paper. So the, it's like, it's just amazing what it does to the skin and like, you know, how three dimensional it, 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 it ends up being in real life it it's just truly amazing to see them in in person right right so. yeah okay well i i have no idea when you get to miami you're gonna do very well over there and let's uh, hope i no no you're gonna be just I, I can feel it you're gonna be just fine but i do hope you'll come back to new york because i would love to come to one of your galleries and you know i i, I know you're gonna put me on the vip list right <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I do, yeah, I do want to say the article that we're referring to. Actually, um, anyone can find it in your uh, web on your website. It's called "Pleasure, Helplessness, Fear, Taboo." Let me let me put my eyes in it. "Pleasure, Helplessness, Fear, and Taboo" in the work of photographer Robert Andy Combs, Jerry Saltz. It is a very good article, Vulture. Uh, and um, again, I did enjoy reading it. So now let's talk about you for a second, okay? Yeah. Each one of your pages on uh, your website is kind of like a mini gallery. Right. Okay, there was one very special called Polaroids. Mm -hmm. Right, and I um, really did enjoy it. I did recognize you. Yeah. Yes, and now you, there was a trampoline, was there a trampoline accident, was it? I think I read. Yes, in 2009, I broke my neck on a trampoline. Okay. Now, those pictures in the Polaroids are of you like in high school or in your first degree? Or? Uh, they, were, they were in my undergrad. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, so I was about like 19, 20 yeah. uh, until 2009 when my accident happened. And then they stopped making Polaroid film uh, yeah. at that point. Okay. So. So yeah, I would um, I would just you know photograph my my friends. I I found an old Polaroid camera uh, at like a second hand store, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna give this a go. Um, so I would go to the Walgreens by my apartment, and I would bounce checks um, so I could buy the film because it was like twenty dollars a pack, and like I was, you know, a you know young young kid um who didn't have any money working two jobs and like trying to go to school at the same time and oh been there and so, that. <laughs> yeah so i would i would go and like stock up on polaroid film and bounce checks but um yeah it's kind of like my one of my personal archives um just the uh polaroids have such a have such a huge history in the gay community um mm -hmm. like tom bianchi and and you know other uh, queer artists in uh, the the photographic community because you know you could take the image and it would automatically develop itself. So you didn't need to like you know go get your film developed or and like um, have have your identity or your friends' identities. Um, you know you you wouldn't be outed from you know just. Uh, the Polaroids that, and and there's just there's something uh, cool where you you know you it, it, it's like a takeaway you can you can give a Polaroid to someone right. you know it's like that instant. You seem to be very much the same person from the research I've done and just the visual yeah. images that you've given us. 
you seem to be the same person uh, you were before and after the, yeah. the, the accident. Yeah, so it, that's true, is it? Yeah, yep. I've always, like, I've always been outgoing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I've, I've always been a performer and like just, I enjoy being in front of people and I, you know, when it comes to the disability and people staring at me, I love it because I'm just like, you know, I, I love the attention, um, you know, and, and like in my delusional mind, I'm like, oh my God, they're thinking, you know, I'm so hot and like, you know, oh, who's that over there, you know, with the bright blue eyes and so, and, and, you know, the, the new luscious locks that I have. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, you get longer <laughs> the last time we, we were yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, no, I, I definitely haven't lost any of my, uh, in, you know, independence or individualism. Uh, I, it just, you know, it, it takes a, a little more help. It takes a village, um, yes. to yeah. make everything happen. And, and like, I, I, I'm so like egotistical and narcissistic, like I love myself. So if I need something, I'm gonna ask people to help me right. you know, get it done. Right. So <laughs> well, that, that that also comes self appreciation yeah. comes across in your work as well. And I, and, and again, that was a, a, one, a few questions down, but I'm gonna go there now. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah you do seem to really enjoy being who you are, and you know, uh, really, really um, have a great life. So uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it is it's it's not easy, but I mean, you know, finding people to surround yourself with um, makes it a lot easier, and and just have fun with it, and enjoy your friends. Like I get to have so many like amazing relationships with my friends that you know that it just it, it's a whole different world of of intimacy and friendship, and and it's it's just amazing that I get to spend like being this close with my friends. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, listen, Robert, I cannot thank you enough for spending this time with me. It has been wonderful. Uh, for having me. <laughs> Thanks for reaching out. <laughs> oh no, we, listen, I, I think you're great. I mean, I really do. I, I I'm super excited about what, what you're going to do there in, in Miami. Uh, it, it, it really will. Don't forget about us in New York. And, and you know, no, I, no, I will never. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to live in New York. So uh, I'm just going to take a sabbatical until uh, COVID is over. And then uh, hopefully by then I'll, you know, I, well, I will be making a lot more work uh, in Miami. So. Right. Yeah. I was going to say you do plan on doing a lot more producing a lot more over there. Yes. 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 Especially because it's warm all year round. Like I can, you know, just go outside and photograph hot guys on the street. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and that, you know, there's also, uh, there's also a, a big spinal cord injury uh, community there as well. Right. Um, so that I'm excited pain. to reach out. Sounds like you've got a great plan. <clears throat> Robert, you are amazing. I think you are one of the most talented people I know and a uh, great personality and i can't wait for you to i'm going to be selfish i can't wait for you to get back to new york city because i right. want to meet you. so <laughs> yes okay be good all right